that. There we go. And we can put all the buttons we can so that the time will automatically have came down. Okay. So you can see where you are in time and then it'll go red and then you'll be able to buy more buttons. Got it. Just want to think over my glasses so we can pass over them. Hello everybody, I'm Glenn Shrest here with Richard. I'm, I'm from Meta and Richard represents Vertal. We collaborated in developing the RV3 rack frame, uh, the Meta version, and we'll be going through the design specs of that here today. The Meta version is a frame design based on the base specification that Richard in mentioned in his previous discussion. Um, and this is called option one. The Google version that he shared earlier was option two. Uh, and it provides the structure and power for interoperability of open rack based IT systems. It builds on the foundation of the ORVT frame that's been shipping for quite some time. And it's also the fundamental building block for the open compute ecosystem. I do want to note that V2 and V3 power shelves, gear, they're not interchangeable. It's kind of something that people need to know about. This is a comparison of the open rack version two version versus version three. Uh, V3 is 48 volt support and V2 was not. The power shelves can be any rack slot in V3 where they were more prescribed in V2. There's a toolless rail kit in the version three that maybe you saw over at the Rital booth and in the V2 they were actually had hardware to hold them in place. We also are supporting RU gear uh, in V2. It was only open U. So we were able to mix, mix them to, um, in terms of what support you have. We'll show you later the rack has squares to hold the rails in different locations to support either of them. Um, they do require different rail kits, whether they're open U or RU. And then the next one here shows the capacity. You'll see the additional capacity of open U and the 47 RU as well. The new rack also has a modular cable, cabling solution in V2. It was welded in part of the weldment, so you weren't able to uh, change that out. So this allows you to, and we'll get into more details later, allows you to change uh, the cable management depending on your rack configurations. The cross brace is also movable. In V2 it was welded in place, so you didn't have optionality in where you could put it. Uh, and the rack in V3 is taller than V2, as it's shown there in the, in the numbers. And in terms of payload, same payload. And this is a basically a high-level summary of the critical specs to give kind of overview. Some of them are a repeat from the previous slide, so you have the size there, the payload, the 150-kilogram uh, rear door max weight came out of the rear door heat exchanger work from OCP, so that's where that's a requirement. And uh, we'll get into some of the fasteners we have on the front and rear of the, the uh, frame to help support that. The airflow direction is front to back. And again, we have open U and RU support, and those are the uh, maximum number of ch chassis slots we have. The ambient temperature range is 10 to 60 operating, and we have a humidity of 85% with a dew point listed there. Uh, and you might have seen some samples of manifolds out on the floor there. We are going to be supporting uh, blind mate liquid cooling at a later date. I'm also leading that effort in another work stream, so it all kind of ties together. 
design updates. So since the last time we shared the CAD design with, with, with the community, we've made some fairly minor changes. The images on the right there are the yellow and blue represent overlaying of an old versus a new design, the current design. And we had some flanges move um, to help with process capability. We had some additional holes adjusted in the inner vertical member to help with some accessories. Uh, the IT gear bracket um, latch, retention latch, they're shown in blue. There's some design changes there because we weren't me meeting the requirement for the force, pull-out force. These are toolless. You will see a, a video later that explains how it works. And then the top canopy baffle uh, was lowered to reduce bypass air from the topmost slot. Some of the challenges we have here. This first bullet looks very simple, but it was months and months of effort. You can imagine this large weldment of a rack and we have very precise requirements in terms of tolerances and feature control because we have blind mate bus bar for power. We also have where we're working on blind mate liquid cooling connectors and manifolds. So all those features are with such a big weldment are quite a big challenge and the Rital team did an awesome job. So we, we solved that using jigs, uh, welding process optimization and minor design changes. Creative things like locating features when it was welded, they would purposely make them off so that when the parts cooled, they would cool back into where they should be. So a lot of trial and error, a lot of smart manufacturing work going on there. The retaining latch for the IT gears I mentioned earlier was improved to help with uh, retention force. And that image there on the right shows the bus bar into the center just for reference. Some of the key interfaces we have, this is not all of them, but some of the main, maybe the ones we'd really want to point out to the community is the rack on the in the front has M8 fasteners. In the rear, there are M8 and M12 fasteners, female fa fasteners. Um, and those are used for doors, rear door heat exchangers, other features that the community may want to use the rack for, adding accessories. And at the bottom of the rack, there are features that are for interacting with the stabilizer. So this rack is quite tall, so stability is a concern, particularly if your configuration doesn't meet certain center of gravity and tilt requirements, depending on where your, your location is as far as safety requirements. Um, some of the key interfaces as well, and inside the frame is those square hooks you see, the squares you kind of see going up and down inside the rack. Those are OU and RU slots for the rail kits, and those are precision located to also help with tolerances and feature control. And uh, there's also bends and other features that use for like the rail stops so that they can't come in and for the latch stop for where it can't come out. All right, thank you. It's over to Richard. Um, yeah, so as Glenn mentioned, we had some challenges and some product updates uh, throughout the development. Um, so one of them was the IT bracket. So the image there on the left shows a pretty rudimentary test that we carried out, but an effective test nonetheless. Um, whereby we um, yeah, were essentially testing the, the pull-out force um, and ensuring that it was um, the changes were effective um, and all the, the rails would stay fitted into the rack um, through normal use. So uh, as the equipment was being removed, obviously you want to make sure the rails aren't dropping out given that they're now toolless. Um, one of the other tests we carried out as well was uh, a rack mover test. So um, using a meta tug uh, with a fully populated rack, um, did a series uh, of tests, like handling tests to move the rack around and ensure kind of equipment engagement was still there um, and the rack was still functional and, and didn't distort throughout like the normal life cycle of the product. Um, so one of the big changes between ORV2 and ORV3 uh, is this cable management tray. Um, so in ORV2, it was integral as part of the rack. So it was part of the frame world, uh, non-configurable, can do anything about it, it's just there. Um, this new design uh, is now removable. Um, therefore, if you wanna have a, a series of bayed racks and lay cables along, uh, along the front of them, you're able to just remove the cable managers and run that um, cable loom. Um, and also you can change it. So if there's a specific uh, um, kind of cable management type that is um, that you have a requirement for, you can just rip out this uh, the, the standard one, replace it with, with your special one. Um, rip it out, huh? Yeah, <laughs> carefully rip it out. Um, there's also been some air containment blanks in development. Um, so one of the changes that Glenn mentioned was we'd uh, increase the height of the baffle at the top to reduce air pass through. Um, 
this kit is kind of supporting that. So if there's any empty use space, you're able to simply slide essentially these um, these units in on the standard shelves. Um, so there's no clipping or anything. It's all just sitting on the shelf, um, and, and yeah, increases the airflow efficiency throughout the product. Um, so again, another change from V2 to V3, the, the top and bottom air containment at the uh, rear of the rack, uh, very similar concept, but with a change in height of the product, th there's some changes, so not exactly the same um, between the two racks. Um, and another bigger change is the, the bade racks, um, kind of air containment solution. So on ORV2, there was uh, a pair of rubber strips that just ran up the front of the rack. Um, on this version, we've got two at the rear and one at the front. Um, and yeah, the overlapping um, rubber gasket just aids again with uh, airflow efficiencies and, uh, and maintaining that. Um, so short animation here, just kind of highlighting the, the toolless nature of the rails. Um, so available, you've got um, OU and RU rails, all similar or the same concept, but um, they obviously support the different equipment heights. Um, and you've got the IT brackets versus the power shelf brackets. So power shelf brackets, exactly the same, just a, a simply a shorter version of that rail. Um, and yeah, as mentioned, they're all toolless now. So ORV2, you needed one fastener, um, whereas these ones, you can just pull them out without any kind of additional hardware, tooling, anything like that. Um, <coughs> so looking at the changes on the cross brace, Again, ORV2, it was quite a rigid frame, uh, and these cross braces, the mid-height beams, were all welded into the frame weldment. Um, so on kind of like you're immediately losing a half a U of equipment space, and it's always in the same space. Um, this new version, uh, really simple, it's got six parts and six fasteners, um, and you're able to kind of um, customize the, the position of them. Um, so between 18U and 27U, you, you can fit the, uh, the cross brace anywhere in that space um, to suit your deployments. Um, and these are only necessary for, for loads exceeding 800 kilograms. Um, so really that's, that's kind of like a really big benefit, big bonus going from V2 to V3 just with uh, additional flexibility. Um, so Glenn mentioned earlier about the, um, the geometry in the base tray. Uh, this is for the stabilizers. Um, so yeah, another toolless uh, accessory, um, <coughs> which yeah, as I said, interfaces with the base tray, um, and the 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 design is exactly the same left to right. So there's no kind of like wrong way to assemble these on. If it's on the rack, then it's on right. Um, and yeah, th these are used to kind of help with the the health and safety issues of of certain uh, configurations and deployments. Um, okay, so the information that is yet to be provided, uh, all the CAD and drawings for the, the frame assembly, the uh, frame sub-assemblies and components, um, and all the key accessories and kits. Uh, currently, these have been submitted to the incubation committee for review, um, so we're just awaiting the outcome for that. Um, and then rolling off the back of that, uh, the target is once the incubation committee has approved all the drawings uh, and all the models, then within 60 days we'll be making those available to everybody. Um, and yeah, a link will be provided once once the uh, design's been approved. Um, so yeah, the, the way everybody can get more involved, uh, you can jump on the, uh, the Rack and Power project page. The latest specs are available on there. Um, and of course, you can join the, uh, the Rack and Power mailing group to, to stay up to date with all the current changes. Um, I did want to mention one thing about the availability. This isn't just a spec release. You'll be able to order a specific SKU from Natal. So that SKU will be listed in the bottom of the spec. So if you want to go out and actually buy the rack, you can do that. So this isn't just a spec, but in the CAD, you can actually go buy the rack yourself. Um, so yeah, that's the end of our presentation. I don't know if there's any more questions. Uh, anything?